Oh, I love this place. What a hidden gem in the Ukraine. So happy to be here. What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from Mukachevo, Ukraine. This is Transcarpathia region right on the border with Slovakia and Hungary. So they also call this Munkach, right? <laughs> right. Munkach in Hungarian. The town dates back to like the 9th century. This castle behind us dates back to the 14th, 15th century. And what we're doing today is we're gonna explore the castle, then we're gonna go down to the town and we're gonna go to a traditional Transcarpathian restaurant. We're gonna have some delicious food. I'm excited. Are you ready? Oh yes, I'm ready. The castle called Palana closes at 6 p.m. We're gonna explore it. Let's enjoy guys. Yeah, it's 515 right now, so we have to run inside. To enter the castle costs 50, so like two US dollars. Guys, so the plaque on the building says it's 14th, 15th century, but there was a little wooden fortification on the castle hill already in the 9th century. In the 10th century, this territory belonged to Hungarian tribes. Then 11th century is the first written record about the castle. This sculpture symbolizes a Celtic farmer who holds a Celtic cross. Uh, that's the symbol of Christianity and eternity. He is holding uh, this uh, we, uh, wheat. Uh, this is the symbol of, of farming. So it's like two different entrances to the castle, right? So they have the first moat, right? And then another moat. There were also ravelines secondary sub fortifications then the castles were built at different times there were more simple structures then they were more complicated <laughs> exactly like most of the medieval castles in yeah. europe right and this is the main part of the castle right yeah that's the oldest part of the, the castle. oldest part all stones i mean it reminds me of like castles in germany similar right like these uh i guess i don't even know yeah what there were some it. breaks because it was restored you see so mm-hmm so can we see some rooms or what do we do yeah, here? Yeah. The Eastern Bastion over here. Over there we have a torture chamber. So the area we just walked through was the lower castle. This is the upper castle. This man is Prince Koryatovich, the first owner of the castle in the 14th century. And this is done for luck. So obviously I have to do it. It's good luck, right? Yeah. Oh. So what is this? A lot of artifacts. There were a lot of archaeological excavations did here, like uh, 500,000 years BC. So these are all metal stuff, stone stuff, clay pottery, whatever was found. Like every castle, it's usually built at a high point, and that's where you know ancient people used to stay as well. So over here we have. You know, different arrows, different tools. Farming, fishing, so all these instruments can be found here. What metals did they use? What kind of jewelry they had then? So this is all defining the culture of the people who were populating these territories. In this museum, you learn about the history of the castle dating back to the Neolithic period all the way until now. So you can see maps, how the area has changed, Hungarian, Polish, Ukraine, Soviet, etc. I mean, it has gone through many different hands and we're right here. So we are literally on the cusp of both countries, Slovakia and Hungary. Romania is a little more south and then over there is Moldova. Beautiful, so history, right? That's what you learn here. Many different people, nationalities that lived here, like the Hungarians made up 27% uh, in Munkac and 40% were Jews, for example. So Ukrainians were the minority actually here. Now the situation changed. We have 77% of Ukrainians in this town. We exited the museum, came back into the courtyard and we just noticed here the castle water well, dating back to the 14th century. And do you know how deep it goes? It goes 76 meters deep to the bottom of this hill. We just keep making our way up. Here we have more views overlooking the castle. Beautiful. So that's the lower castle, upper castle. So they have other exhibitions in the castle, but unfortunately because it's at 540 right now, they closed all of them. So try to get here, I'd say 430 latest if you want to see the museum, exhibitions, and explore the grounds. Now we're gonna go out of the castle. Before that, they have a souvenir shop I want to check out. Hopefully they have something cool to buy. This lady is uh, Ilona Zrini, who was the wife of uh, Ferenc Rakoti the first, the owner of this castle. She widowed, and this is her son, Ferenc Rakoti the second, the next owner of the lands and of the castle. And this is a souvenir shop of the castle. As you can see, they have many things for sale. They have plates, they have shot glasses with the, you know, with the castle and the town name, right? Right here, Bucaccio. They have beads. I love this. So this is basically like the armor of a knight, right? The medieval knight back in those days. 
They have, if you like beer, you can get one of these beautiful glass mugs, like huge. Oh, very nice. That's basically it. So come, you know, support the locals, buy something if you really want to. You know, a souvenir from the castle would be awesome. I really love this one, but to be honest, I don't really need it. So thank you so much. Chaco yo, chaco yo. All right, let's go. David, we are done with the castle. Let's go to the city center and see it. Two minute drive later and we're here in the center of Mukachevo. 50,000 people live in this town. It's really pretty, nice colors. Is there like a center? What are we gonna see here? Walking center with nice coffee houses, beautiful monuments, a promenade where all people are walking. A church always in the center, right? Yeah, a lot of churches. Church. And a city hall as well. So I guess let's see what we find, right? Mm -hmm. This monument right here are the two guys who invented the Cyrillic alphabet. Cyrilla and Metodius, who made this alphabet so complicated for you, but so dear and easy for us. <laughs> It's impossible for me. I can't read anything. <laughs> there are places in the cities where you make wishes. You can see it by the Polish size of the monument. Can you guess whose monument is that? I don't mean the cat, but who is this man? A uh, chimney sweeper? Yes, you're right. And he's looking at the next roof to, to clean the next chimney. A cute, isn't that? Good one. This promenade is made up of coffee shops, restaurants, commercial vendors, and then three monuments. This one is what? Saint Martin and a beggar. And what's that? This is the Roman Catholic Cathedral of Saint Martin that was built according to the project of Hungarian architect Otto Rieger in 1904. So we walked back to the main square where the city hall is. There's another street here. Similar, all commercial vendors, coffee houses, no monuments though, and that's basically the town center, right? Right. Now dinner. Yeah. Where are we going? We are going to a restaurant of local cuisine called Poriad de Gazda, which is translated as a decent host. So let's see how decent will be the host. <laughs> Trans Carpathian food. <laughs> yes. And the, the restaurant's actually back next to the castle, so we're going back yeah. that way. Yeah. Let's go. Graf, Duke, yeah, Duke, no, Duke is a Herzog, Count, Count's court, <laughs> like Count's property. You mean like Count Dracula? <laughs> Messy with you. Transylvania? Yeah. Transylvania, exactly. Yeah. Love this place already. Look at this. Huge complex. Right there, we have the castle. Let's go inside. Let's see what we're gonna eat. I need some food right now and some wine. This area is famous for their wines. Can't wait. Tomorrow we're going to wineries. Hello, hello. hello, hello. It smells so good. You know what is that? These are these waffles with cheese she's baking. Mmm, yum. Cheesy, huh? Cheesy. Mmm, the cheesy cracker. A little wafer. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's good. Look at all the cheese behind her. Over here we have sausages. Mm, so many sausages. And three different types here. Mmm. Mmm. Very creamy. Mmm. Freshly baked. Freshly baked. Look, she's doing it right here. At the entrance to the restaurant, you have a very nice, cute, small eco food shop. It's called, called a good host. So you can either buy these cheeses or whatever other product sausages they have here or taste them in the restaurant. Wow, look at this. What so we have design. a VIP table here. Yeah, yeah, they were waiting for us. Love wow. this restaurant. Wow, you so. Feel home like. Such exactly. an atmosphere like you're at home, like grandma's home. <laughs> it, it feels like you're in a tent, actually, because the roof, like the ceiling. Look at this. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. Over here we have like everything, all the pickles, right? Mm -hmm. Pickles everywhere. We have beer over there. We have wine. I mean, this is going to be amazing. Can't wait to eat. So I'm going to start off with a local beer. It's a coffee cream beer and it's produced by the house. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. In this fridge they have their homemade vodka. It's like you have to try at least one. I have no idea what this is, but we'll see. Mmm. It's like nutty, no? Like nuts? Nuts. Oh. It's a berry? Berry, yeah. I don't know. It's it's a berry from this area, yeah, right? Yeah. It felt like a little bit of walnuts, but I guess not. Little raspberry. Mmm. Wow, that's good. You like that? I like that. That was awesome. The, the manager here is like, you have to come see the kitchen. Always, for sure. Hello, hello. 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 My friend. Hello. Woo. We are gonna visit a brewery. You already have your duck beer on your table, but we go first see how it's 
done. This is incredible. What an amazing spot. So they have great food, they have delicious vodka, and they make their own beer. Wow. Everything here is farm to table, by the way. Everything. She was saying 80% of the products that they have here are from their farm. I think his uh, his grandson or his son is uh, fishing here. Wow, he got, he got something, a trout? The grandfather was the grandson of fishing. <laughs> the whole complex where they make cheese, smoke sausages, and produce beer. <laughs> and they make their own vodka, I had one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had it, I had it. Yeah, fast, you I don't need me. No, because I'm like, what is this? And he's like, we make it. I'm like, let's try it, why not? They are producing six types of beer at the moment. They are all unfiltered. So the beer we're gonna taste now is made with two hops and two malt types. This is their Blondale, 4% unfiltered. Boudemont. 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 Oh, I love unfiltered beers. It's like almost like weedy. It's cloudy. Mmm, delicious. Like you feel it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go back inside. Back <laughs> I need inside? to eat. I need to eat. No, 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 David. You have to taste more. There are six types of beer and you tried only one. <laughs> more? Let's go. Oh, I love this place. Wow. What a hidden gem in the Ukraine. So happy to be here. My friend here created this brewery himself. He's the brew master, he's the entrepreneur, he did it. Awesome. To so, him. To him. To, to him. Michael. To Michael. Zavas. 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 is the Mmm. So good. Love these unfiltered beers. Wow. I'm not really a pill, uh, a lager guy, you know, but this one's nice. It's crisp. Okay, one more, one more, <laughs> one more. This uh, type of beer is called Golden. It has four types of mold and two types of uh, hops, plus other type of yeast. <laughs> okay, so we're doing the Golden Ale, my friend, with more, with more. Mmm, that was awesome. That was like fruity, it's creamy. Mm. And it's giving us very little, obviously, because it's it's mostly uh, you know head foam. Mm -hmm. ah. And he cleans it with water, gives you some water, so you clean your receptors, right? So you clean your palate. This is the office beer, more intense, more bitter. It looks like a dank IPA, but I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. A pale ale, no pale. Ale? So I guess we're trying all the beers, all six. Okay, wheat beer next. Mmm, this one's great. Mmm, so creamy. Oh, I love wheat beer. And unfiltered, even better. Mm -hmm. And they're all light. They're all super light. Plus, it's giving us small samples. It's not like we're drinking like a full beer. Once we finish this, probably one full beer, maybe beer and a half. He gave me this huge mug and he's like, you have to put on an apron. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, tak, tak. <laughs> <laughs> He's too funny. Okay guys, I'm gonna pour a full beer here for dinner. Oh, oh. This is amazing. This is the best beer you can ever get directly from the tanks. So good. It's for me? <laughs> okay. My friend. Good more. Oh. <laughs> this guy's the best. You have to come to this restaurant just for this character. This guy, he's like, it's gonna go down. You need more. <laughs> One of my favorite restaurant experiences here in Ukraine. This is like too much and everybody's too friendly down here in Transcarpathia. It's like, they're just like, come in, drink, eat, don't stop. And this is, I guess like more of a, Bolrach. Yeah, so basically pork ribs, we have potatoes, we have carrots on the side, we have chili flakes, and then over here we have pickles. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. I'm gonna steal one. Oh, homemade Transcarpathian produce here. Sausages, pork sausages, blood sausage. And then there's also kind of bacon, but pork bacon, if you I might say so. And then baked potatoes and some uh, fried onions. Let's finish the soup before we get to the main course, but all oh, that looks so good. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
is like pork fat, like rolling around in here. Mmm. You have to go in here, grab one of these ribs. Oh, so hot. <laughs> like on fire. Mmm. Mmm. Also oh, tasty. Next up, though, I gotta do something really special. I'm gonna put this right inside. Let's see how spicy I can make this. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Wow, it's hot. Mmm. But the mix of the pork, the broth, the, the potatoes, the carrots. This is like a traditional Hungarian soup for winter. Because in winter, you need to get hot. You know, it's really cold outside. Oh, these ribs, though. They fall apart. Mm hmm. Look at that. Mm. Like a dog. Just rip it to the bone. <laughs> the rest of this is just fat. Lots of fat. The perfect winter dish for the Magyar. Somebody's birthday. Watching you eating the soup was such a pleasure. You're really a Hungarian man because it's only a real Hungarian man can eat the soup to the end. <laughs> Magyar. <laughs> you know what? You gotta finish the whole soup though. Oh, spicy though. You wanna make it even more spicy? I love this though. The red pepper, the red chili flakes, they throw on all my pizzas. Mmm. All right, sausages now. I'm gonna grab one of these. Oh my god. Mmm. Like it just juices out. I love these style of sausages. Super thin, very long. All pork, right? All pork. How it should be in the Ukraine. Before we jump on the meat, I need a beer because I'm hot right now. Blood sausage, the first thing I'm jumping on. This blood sausage just has a little bit of rice, right? It's not like like bursting out, but at the same time, very like mushy. Mmm, it's falling apart. Mmm. Mm. It's almost like a, a rice pudding with blood. Next up, let's try this. So what do we have here? It's like pork belly, right? Mm. The meat, the fat, mm, has like a glazy sauce on it. Crazy food here. I gotta chop this up. There's another sausage. Mm hmm. A little smoky, this one. And right here, we have baked potato. I think there's uh, cheese on top. And, uh, right? I think so. And some caramelized onions. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No cheese, just caramelized onions. We still have another surprise coming, but I gotta finish this. Tea. Herb tea. Carpathian herb tea. <laughs> so the last thing to try is uh, basically a little toast, right? With butter. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Feels like it's infused with like some pork fat or something. Here we have uh, four cheeses that you have to try, David, and they are produced in their uh, manufacture here. So please take a piece of cheese, dip it in the jam, and enjoy. Okay, my friends. So I'm gonna start from here and go my way this way, right? So every single one I dip, like that. Mm. It's like super fresh cheese. Wow. Let me go slowly. If I eat that one right now, I'm not gonna finish this. Let's go. All with the marmalade, right? Mm-hmm. Nice white cheese. This one's harder. That's like a super soft one. Almost like a cottage cheese, right? We have yellow cheese. Mmm. Almost like a cheddar. Mm-hmm. Wow. Too many. This place is the best. Here's like a cheese coma right here. It's so creamy. If you like cheese, like my wife, get this plate. 
Mm. Mm. It's so good. Sweet. You should definitely get this as an appetizer. Share it with your family and enjoy. By the way, I completely forgot to talk to you about the cream ale. It's super creamy. It is delicious. Oh, fantastic dark beer. Especially unfiltered. Okay, so, so we have another surprise. This place is the end. <laughs> let's go. So we have one last surprise. It's a secret. Secret. Okay, <laughs> let's go. This guy is the man. He's too funny. We're going down in a tunnel. Oh, so we taste beer down here. Oh, it's freezing. It's a cellar. This is incredible. Wow, what a beautiful place. So you have the pickles right there. You have the bottles. And I think we're going to open a bottle right now. Exclusive bottle. This beer is six years old. Before you will be able to taste it, the owner will taste it himself. Okay. That's an exclusive beer, which was made six years ago for the first beer festival in Mukacho, where the participants are only the brewers from Transcarpathia. So this beer has four types of malt. This beer changes its taste and flavor every year, just as a human being. Love Mukacho. Mukacho. Look at this. 4% beer, changes every year. Mmm, it's like almost like a brown ale. It's almost brownish. Mmm, so good. Aged for six years. So it didn't age in barrels, it aged in the bottle. Right here. Mungachevo is amazing. You have to come here when you come to Transcarpathia. Wow, what a town. We started off at the castle, we went to the old town, saw the main pedestrian you know, center, and then we came over here to this incredible restaurant. What an experience here. I thought we were gonna come in and eat, but no, it was way more than that. We sat down, we went to the kitchen, we tried some vodka, then we saw the brewery. I had no idea the brewery was here, and the owner's the man. He like made me try every single beer. So like hospitable, incredible. The food was delicious. Oh man, from the pork, the morcilla or the blood sausage, oh, it's my favorite. But also pork belly, the soup, very spicy Hungarian soup, and then this unique beer. My friends, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe my channel for more awesome travel content. We'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Transcarpathia. Transcarpathia. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not, now the beer is getting to me. <laughs> Transcarpathia, which is right on the border with three different countries. Incredible spot here in Ukraine. Oh, you have to come here. Hey, one more. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, you have seen that for sure. I'm with you always with my, in my soul. <laughs> oh, these guys are too much. I'm like, I'm about to cry. This is like my Hungarian brother. Boom.